Alrighty, so what we're going to do is do a little flooding lab for this module. So you've hopefully heard the terms recurrence interval because we talked about it in lecture and it was on the previous page that led up to this lab. And so one way that we can evaluate a flood hazard is by its recurrence interval. How often we think a flood of a specific size may occur on a specific river. So if we have enough data, we can actually tell you that and say, hey, you know, in this example here, about every 15 years, you will get a flood that is ranked seventh on the flood scale of, in this case, the Salt River, let's say. So something that's that large would happen every 15 years. So we would know the value of that, right? So we would say 120,000 cubic feet per second is the seventh largest flood ever on the Salt River. And when that happens, you know, it overtops its banks and it floods, you know, these streets. So we would say, you know, every 15 years that's going to happen on average. That would be the recurrence interval. Or we could do a probability, which is basically in any given year, what are the chances of that size flood actually happening? So in this case, it would be about a 6% chance. So every year, there's a 6% chance that that size flood would occur on this particular river. And so that can be used for, you know, uh, hazards and insurance purposes and things like that to evaluate the area and determine if it is a high, low, medium kind of flood hazard. And so we can do that really quick here. So given some data or asking you to rank them, because that's one of the, the pieces of data we need to calculate the recurrence interval and probability. So you're going to rank them based on their size here. Once you've done that, you should be able to calculate the recurrence interval and probability for several of those flood events. So that's what you're going to do in the first part here. And then one other way is we can look at the amount of water or in this case discharge a volume of water over time that a river could hold or support basically because the discharge is the width of the stream channel so how wide it is and how deep it is so if we measure the stream channel with a ruler or some measure we might say hey it is you know 10 feet wide and it's four feet deep and so it can only support that much water in that area and so we can get a volume for that if we know the velocity of the river so all those three things would tell us the discharge if it exceeds that discharge we would argue that one of the things that would give in that equation would be the depth right if my stream can only hold you know four feet of water and we increase the discharge it's going to have to actually overtop the banks and that would mean that it can't support anymore. And so then that would be a flood event. So if we know the maximum that the water or the stream can support, then we can compare that to other values and say, well, you know, if my stream can hold 1,000 cubic meters per second based on its width and its depth and the average speed of the water moving through there, if that's more than 1,000, we're going to get a flood event. So that's one simple, you know, back of the envelope kind of calculation we can do. So that's what we're asking you to do here is calculate what it can support. And then if we change some of the values, would it flood or not? So that's a very simple way. There's another way, and this is actually a little more complicated because we want to look at maybe a larger area and see how it impacts our river systems. And so in this example, I'm going to have you evaluate a drainage basin. So we talked about that in lecture also, remember? But if we know the properties of this area that is dumping water into my main trunk stream here, I can evaluate its flood hazard. Because as rainwater falls here, some of the properties of that area are going to dictate how much water gets into the system. If it's really steep, that has an impact on how much water sinks into the ground and how much water actually flows into my river system there's a lot of vegetation that's going to impact how much water gets into the system a lot of vegetation is going to absorb some of the water less gets into my stream right and so 
we can do that by looking at some of the properties. And so that's what we're going to ask you to do for this kind of area here in the McDowell Mountains. This is a drainage area for this little river that's in green here that's coming out where this little black triangle is, where the B is. And so any rainwater that falls in this area is going to get funneled into this stream and flow down this way. So if we know something about the properties here, we can determine how much water might come out here, and then we could use that to determine if there will be a flood based on how much water that can support, how much water might come out. So that's what you're going to do in this lab here. So the first thing is to determine square miles. So using this, and I know it's a pain when we're doing online, but you might actually have to hold a piece of paper up there and make a little mark and then get an estimate right for we're basically assuming that this is a rectangle I know it's not a perfect rectangle but it's about as close as we can get in the real world so pick an average length and an average width multiply those together and you should get square miles and then in order to evaluate this area I need it in acres instead of square miles so really we're just multiplying by this 640 which is a just a, a conversion factor and so that's going to give you acres <clears throat> then we need to know how steep it is so we're going to try to pull from your brain something about contour interval so looking at here what do each of these lines represent in feet right so is it 10 20 30 40 because we need to know the gradient how steep is it from a to b so I need to know the elevation at A, the elevation at B, and roughly the distance the water would travel here. So I know you have to use this little scale here. So we'll need the elevation here, elevation here, and we'll need the horizontal distance. And then we can calculate a gradient. So that's what these questions are asking you to do, elevations at different points, roughly the distance traveled, the water, and then you can use the calculation for gradient where we do the difference between A and B, the elevation difference, and we divide it by the total miles and you should get feet per mile. Okay, and then we can do a little slope percent and use that to help us figure out if it's steep or gentle. And so here's our little chart that we're identifying some of the properties of my drainage basin. The one we just did was really relief here. How steep is it? And so if the slope percent is above 30, we would assign a numeric value 18 to this drainage basin. If it was between 10 and 30, we would assign a 12 and so on. And so the idea of this chart is to assign values to these four different properties of my drainage basin. And so we add up all these properties and that gives us a number that we can use to estimate discharge. And so the relief one we just did, that's not too bad. So it's asking you to do that. And so, and then we're going to evaluate some of the other things like soil infiltration. If if the drainage basin is slow to take up water, how would we evaluate that? So you just have to read some of these things. So because we can't measure all these in the lab, especially online, I'm just going to give you some properties and then you're going to look up here and pick out the description that matches what I gave you and use that value. And then in the end, after we do all those values, we will get a total amount. So this is the total number that represents the characteristics of our drainage basin. Then we come to this holy crap crazy <laughs> graph that's going to allow us to determine the discharge, how much cubic feet per second that our system can support. And then we're going to use that to figure out if we could get a flood, right? So how do we do that? Well, we calculated the drainage area in acres up above. And so figure out where that is, and that's going to be this line that's going straight up here, this vertical line. And then the total number of characteristics, when we added up those four properties, what value was that? That, are, that is these lines that are diagonal. What you want to do, come up from the bottom for the drainage in acres, 
come from the side here from the characteristics and wherever they meet you're going to draw a line horizontally all the way across and this will be the value for the discharge that this stream system can produce okay and so luckily it's multiple choice you should be able to get pretty close using those values and so <clears throat> the idea would be that if this is the amount of water that this stream can support based on the characteristics if it exceeds that we could get a flood so if this is the properties of my stream then would I get a flood here based on how much we just calculated could come through the system and so you're going to figure out the discharge here and compare it to here right the idea is that if my stream can hold let's say 500 cubic meters per second or in this case we are using feet so cubic feet per second and my system can produce 2000 well then my stream can't support that there'll be a flood right but if my stream can support 5000 cubic feet per second and the most my system can ever produce is 2000 well there won't be a flood here because it can handle that amount of discharge right so it's a it's a little quick and dirty way to do that but it's a little more in theory if we were in the real world you would go out into the field we would hike this area you would evaluate these characteristics and then you'd come back and do some math to kind of figure that out this is just to give you a little taste of that so hopefully we've kind of made it a little easier for you to comprehend based on some of the information you already know just to give you a little feel for how you might evaluate the flood hazard on some particular river systems based on properties of the drainage basin okay as always if uh, you are now totally confused please don't hesitate to contact me and let me help you okay